All right, now we're joined by Mian Rice, who's running for uh, King, uh, City Council, District 5. So go ahead with your two-minute introduction. All right, well, thank you guys so much for allowing me to be here today. I must say that uh, I love Seattle. I was I've been born and raised here. My family's here, and my wife and I are raising our child here. But clearly, this is not the Seattle of my childhood that I remember. Um, there are a number of issues that we have today. We have uh, transportation issues, we have public safety issues, housing issues. As a council member, I would work with a diverse group of citizens to work together to help solve our issues that will both be practical and progressive. It's essential that we hear from everybody and not just the power structure. My background is I have a master's in transportation planning from the School of Civil Engineering. I work both in the public and also in the private sectors. And I also have the unique ability and skill sets that allow me to improve the way that the city does business with you. I am committed to the safety and security and all around the ability of our neighborhoods, like getting our crosswalks, our sidewalks, our community centers, our senior citizen centers. I'm also committed to the restoring and revitalizing Aurora. This could be a safe and healthy place within Seattle. I have worked for the city of Seattle before, and I know how to get things done. And tonight, I'm very happy about being here, and I'm looking for uh, hopefully get your uh, support and also your endorsement as I run for Seattle City Council District 5. And I want to thank each one of you guys for letting me be here tonight. Great, thank you. So now we have our four prepared questions. These are two-minute answers, and they're actually on the piece of paper in front of you. If you want to turn it over and read along as we read them aloud. I think we left off, uh, David, will you do number one? <clears throat> Delighted. Thank you. Uh, Seattle is experiencing a housing affordability crisis. Several policy responses have been suggested, uh, including leakage fees, incentive planning, <coughs> subsidized housing, rent control, others. What is your approach to keeping Seattle affordable? Well, Seattle has, is just booming. You know, as we all know that uh, Seattle is, is growing uh, dramatically, but the housing affordability um, is continuing to rise dramatically. I think that um, we need more um, affordable housing units. I know that the mayor has <coughs> Um, a, uh, a task force uh, called the Housing Affordability Liability. Uh, I forgot the last acronym. Um, but I think that uh, information, a lot of the stuff that's going to come out of there will may bear fruit. But I also think that a partnership with King County, um, they have the ability right now, they're going to be, or in next uh, 2020, in the year 2020, they are looking at uh, building uh, about 900 or more units of affordable housing. And I think that um, with the hotel tax that is sunsetting in the future, we will be, uh, they will be able to leverage some of the, <coughs> the help, well, hotel tax to pay for the um, uh, CenturyLink and the Kingdom uh, now can be more towards the affordability uh, housing perspective. And I think that uh, we should partner with them and also uh, leverage some of the bonds <coughs> now because it makes a financial sense because the way property prices are going higher, the, um, uh, by time we start paying off the loans, by time we pay off the loans in the future, uh, it'll cost too much for the bonds. And so I think we need to issue the bonds now and join with with uh, King County and, and get more housing units within the city of Seattle limits. Great, uh, number two, Joseph. Last year, voters approved a levy to fund a universal preschool pilot program. After the pilot concludes, how would you fund the full implementation of the program, and what policy changes would you make to assure this plan addresses educational disparities in our city? Wow, well, from an educational preschool perspective, uh, I am a huge, huge fan and a supporter of it. I think that we, um, I would uh, look at 
uh, working with the voters to actually continue to extend the pilot program. And I would also work with the uh, city of city council and the members and the mayor to actually um, uh, uh, literally uh, uh, expand the program to um, uh, after school care and also pre uh, um, uh, prior to school to help those families in need that actually has to go to work now. Prior, that also helped a lot of the uh, um, low and income uh, businesses, not businesses, but uh, uh, families out there to, uh, because this is something that's very, uh, this is something that's very important to uh, our communities and preschool is one of our areas where um, I would do everything I can in front, short of, of um, I guess not even short of, just do everything I can to make sure that this pilot program is extended into the future. Um, that's it. Uh, number three. Bertha is still stuck. What options does the City of Seattle have with respect to potential cost overruns, the waterfront, transit, and an unsafe viaduct? Well, Bertha is, um, <laughs> well, Bertha is, Hopefully, will not be stuck in in, uh, in, in the uh, near future. Uh, I think that the the overruns, from my understanding, we will not be charged with it because the design build project is on the contractor to actually <coughs> now absorb the cost and overruns for it. I think that um, with with Bertha, I also think that one. I also think with when it's completed, it'll be a, um, I think the city of Seattle will uh, be better without the viaduct. Um, and I also feel that with Bertha and the viaduct as being the forefront of the um, uh, people's minds, I want to remind those uh, folks that uh, we have another issue which is SR520. Mm -hmm. That is an area where we still haven't had any type of, uh, we don't know what's going to happen with SR520 in terms of our side. The east side has it right, but what about the west side? And this is something that is um, something I feel that's missing within our conversation. But Bertha will be will, will be uh, fixed and it's going to run and and it's up to design uh, us city of Seattle and the wash dot. It's a wash dot project and they need to fix it. So and uh, here we go. Mary number four. Yeah, Seattle is the fastest growing big city in the country. Should we encourage or discourage this growth? And what policy changes are necessary to accommodate the growth? Well, you know, I, I was thinking about this uh, a while ago as it relates to the, um, you know, as I mentioned earlier in the beginning, there's 110,000 more people coming into Seattle. Um, I think that we should institute the urban village concept. I think that, um, once again, you cannot separate land use from transportation. That's something that's, that's uh, um, so we need to, develop those transitory developments and those also land use uh, in those urban village uh, perspective in terms of getting the right infrastructure and the right um, uh, utilities in those areas to support the growth and also green space. Uh, I feel that, um, and that's just not just in the north end, that could be in the south end, it could be anywhere, but mostly, in, but mostly urban village concept with transit Dependency and support is a good, good idea. All right, so now we'll open it up to follow up questions. People can ask whatever they want. These are one minute answers. Anybody want to start? Janet and then Elizabeth. So, um, some may know that um, you probably were not a new father, but as a mother, I'd love to know, having met your mother, what the greatest lessons were you ever learned from your mother? Listen. I'm listening. 
listening and listening, listening and then giving back to the community. It is the, the community is where we all, um, as, and when I say community, I'm talking about everybody and how do we make everybody prosperous. Um, and uh, she is my best friend and my, my mentor and I love her quite a bit. Um, and she has guided me through uh, the area of making sure that um, giving back to the communities is one of the biggest rewards ever. So with your background in transportation planning, what specific ideas do you have for Seattle or what vision do you have for Seattle? Well, my vision for Seattle is we, we, we must try to reduce the amount, give people transportation choices. We have to give folks the opportunities. We need to get more transit service, especially east-west, because uh, we need that grid system. We also need, because it's hard, as hard as I'll get out getting from you know, Lake Washington over here to Ballard. And, and it's, it's, it's just, and not to mention having a transportation or transit, metro transit services, uh, uh, east-west is not there. We, um, my plan is to make sure that we get our transit service and our hours needed to support the citizens uh, with, in all the different neighborhoods. Um, I also think that uh, with the light rail being expanded, I think that's a good thing. Um, I think also um, from a transportation perspective, again, I, I believe that um, you know we're out of road space, so we really need to make sure we're very careful about how we utilize our roads. Um, and time up. <laughs> uh, Joseph from Clayton. So what would be the first bill that you would introduce and how would you work to get it passed? My first bill? Mm -hmm. Well, I have a couple of things that I would, I would, uh, would like to do, but the first thing I would want to do is to um, uh, develop the support of, of um, revising uh, or changing the initiative 200. <laughs> And that is basically from a contracting perspective, because there's some disparities within our in our contracting effort for women minority businesses within this area. Uh, I am also looking. The other bill I will look at is um, seeing what we can do about uh, either lowering or modifying our BNO tax for some small businesses uh, to help them survive and thrive within our neighborhoods. And this goes across the board. I'm just talking small businesses. Um, and uh, make it easier for businesses to uh, to actually uh, be a part of our community. Clayton, and John, uh, I'm curious whether you you think that that uh, uh, you might uh, whether whether the Seattle Housing Authority. Uh, might be changed in some ways as so that it, it would become a more creative response to the problem of uh, affordable housing in Seattle. So Seattle Housing Authority, are you talking about within this, this, the Seattle Housing or Seattle Housing Authority in terms of that separate? constitutional changes constitutional generally. Change. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm... Nature, I mean, I'm, I'm talking broad scale okay. macro changes to SHA, mm -hmm. which would make it more responsive both to um, uh, elected officials of the city, namely right. council and right. mayor, uh, and, and city government. Sure, uh, I would... Um, I would want to make sure that, um, for me, I'm thinking SHA, uh, since it's so, uh, since it's, its response is mostly on the federal side, I think I would like to, the, to uh, make some changes so that way they are responsible for the housing within the communities in which they're, they're, they're trying to improve. <coughs> I think a case in point was the Yeso Terrace. They did a good job in, on, on how that works. And I think that's a great partnership in which yes, the SHA and the city has, has moved that ball forward um, 
from Yes to Terrorists. Another partnership that they also have done uh, is the um, uh, up on Martin Luther King Way. Uh, there used to be uh, New Holly, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of new developments there. But that was also a partnership with with SHA, and I think that um, if we're able to uh, make some changes to actually partner with SHA, <coughs> also we would have some more potential for affordable housing without. Uh, having them be a, uh, being a wall, uh, having a wall between the federal government and us. Mm -hmm. okay. John? In your, in your opening statement, you mentioned something about North Aurora. Yes. Can you give us an idea of what your vision is for how you'd want to develop oh. that corridor? <laughs> well, <laughs> Do I have time for it? <laughs> the, the, the Aurora has, um, you know, from prostitution to drugs to, you know, just the infrastructure is bad. We have, let me just start off by this way. If you're coming from Shoreline, City of Shoreline into the City of Seattle, it looks like you step back in time. It really does. It's, it's just and we're supposed to be the lead city, um, in the golden city, but it, when you look going to our Seattle shoreline uh, border, it's just uh, bad. I want to partner with the neighborhoods. I want to partner with the police department, all the public safety units. I would like to get talk to some developers. I want to talk to all the folks to build, to talk about not just a strip, but, the, but also how do we revitalize it from the strip to the neighborhoods both on the east side and <coughs> on the west side. And that only can that can only be done when it's a partnership with all everybody involved. Um, and my plan is to uh, um, actively uh, solicit talk and develop a strategy and plan and a vision for Aurora as soon as I get into office. Okay, okay. Did it? Uh, <clears throat> I-122. I, I, oh, initial 200. What? I, initial 200? No, oh. The 122 is honest election. Oh, 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 okay, I'm sorry. Thank you. I was waiting for you to ask. That's oh. usually your question. <laughs> <laughs> Have you signed it? Do you support it? And how would it change Seattle elections? <laughs> say, say, say again one more time. I apologize. Have you signed I-122? Do you support it? And how do you think it would change Seattle elections? Um, I-122, and right now I'm blanking on, on I-122 because there's so many I's in the world. So it's uh, so honest, honest election, election. Honest election. which is a public yeah. financing yes. budget system. Um, yes, I do believe in uh, uh, making sure that um, we, we have honest elections. Yes, I do. And, um, um, and I, it's part of my... Uh, effort, I would definitely support it, and, and I do support it. So. Great. Um, time for maybe one more question, Joseph. Which one sitting city council member do you most respect and why? Sitting council member? Right. Um, that's a hard one, actually. Um, the, I guess to say the one sitting council member that I respect mostly um, I guess you, I would have to say Burgess. Um, he seems to be fairly level-headed, um, very practical, and um, and he um, wants to make sure that he. And I'm not saying all the other councilmen don't do this. I'm just saying I think that he uh, um, uh, literally uh, thinks about. Seattle as a whole, um, and uh, is very practical about it and aggressive how he thinks it thinks it through. Um, so I'll ask the last question. So you're running, um, there are seven people running in the fifth district, <clears throat> and some people have commented, and I'm of the opinion, all seven of you are are pretty well qualified and impressive candidates. So I'm wondering, uh, specifically, you, you've talked about sort of what you would bring to the council, but is there um, something that's unique to you that the other six candidates wouldn't bring that, that you have, whether it's experience or a vision or, or whatever? Well, I have, well, 
what separates me from the other uh, candidates is that I have the experience of the city. I know where the lights are uh, turned on. I've worked in the, the, the mayor's office. I, I worked in the office of government relations. I understand how the city works. I understand budget. I understand, I've done the budget before. Um, I have uh, fought for uh, uh, transit, increased transit hours with King County. I've worked with all the council members in the past. I've worked with mayors and also <coughs> county execs, and I've also uh, um, worked with uh, all the county council members in the past as well. So my city and county, and uh, gosh, I even worked with suburban cities associations. So all my experience from understanding not just the city, but also working with the communities and also dealing with uh, all of the, the complicated and challenging issues from race and social justice issues all the way to transportation issues. I've done the breadth of it. And I don't think that uh, the, the, counts, the, the uh, members that are running in this race have the experience in which I have as it relates to it. Um, there it is. Great. Um, so that was almost a closing statement, but now we're about out of time. If you, want to, <laughs> if you want to take 30 seconds for a closing statement. Well, uh, I just, well, my, again, my, you're right. My, my experience is uh, by heads and shoulders uh, more than a lot of my candidates, the other folks that I'm running against. Um, I have dealt with the tough issues. I have uh, I've worked with many, uh, many diverse folks to help. Uh, solve our issues um, and um, I have the ability to represent my district accordingly um, especially when it comes down to infrastructure needs and basic infrastructure needs that, the, that the district five has and so um, I am just excited and I wanted to say thank you so much for allowing me to be here today um, for the opportunity to, to speak in front of you and hopefully I in the future get your endorsement. Thanks. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you.